Hello, everyone. This is our Enrich webinar showcasing the applied research sector in electronics and digital technologies part one. Thank you for being with us. Please note, you can write your questions and message and we will answer them at the end of the webinar. I'm Fernanda Mujica from CNI and I'll be your organizer today. Let's begin. First of all, I'll invite Johanna from the Fremhofer Institute to talk a little bit about the Enrich project. So welcome everybody also from my side. My name is Johanna Haunschert from Fraunhofer IPK um, in Berlin and we are the coordinator of the uh, project called Enrich in Brazil. And I would like to make it very short, give you a short overview about um, the project itself. It all started in 2017. It was a Horizon 2020 project um, in the Global E9 call. We have, besides the Zebra Big, the center in Brazil, also the center in China and one in the United States. The main objective of Zebra Big is to uh, encourage cooperation and also to establish um, strategic partnerships between Brazil and the European Union. One moment. It takes a little of while to show the next slide. Fernanda, can you maybe put your screen on? Yes. I have some technical issues here. Don't worry. I can put the presentation on as well. Yeah. yeah. The next slide, please. Okay. Here it is. Yes. So we have um, in total 12 partners in Enrich in Brazil. We have four in Brazil, which is uh, CNE, which is also today responsible for the webinar. We have CONFAB as funding agency, Unicampi as university partner, and then PAY as an association of innovative um, companies in Brazil. And we have seven partners in the European Union and one from Turkey. As you can see, we have two from Germany, which is one of them is Fraunhofer. We are the coordinator located in Berlin and DLR from Bonn. We have one partner in Porto, Portugal, Spain, in Vienna, and one from Hungary. Next slide, please. Um, the main objective of the Enrich in Brazil is to become the main hub and contact point for Europeans and Brazilians in terms of science, technology, and innovation. So how we want to do that, we want to create win-win situation for both sides. We want also to offer not just services for Europeans, also offer services for Brazilians. We also want to connect European researchers um, in the Brazilian par um, market, but also vice versa. And how are we going to do that? We have elaborated, next slide please, the service portfolio. We call it the Enrich in Brazil experience or the Enrich in Brazil user's journey, which started from um, get informed for somebody who has actually no clue about the other market to get like um, customized or more broad um, studies and analysis to then really find trustful partners in the get connected category. Then we have when you have the partners in the other market, the get funded category when you're looking for, for grants to apply for, for instance, Horizon 2020, where we're offering um, focused um, guidelines, for instance, but also um, some more customized advices how to find investors, for instance. Um, the get going category is more about empowering the people 
and really provide some trainings. Um, for instance, how to write proposal um, trainings and also um, about research and innovation impact. Then we have the fifth category, it's called Get Visible. It's more about consultancy service and tailor-made services to increase the visibility on the other market. And then we have the sixth category, which is more like a transversal category to get advice. Um, it's transversal because it can apply in all the other stages. In the year 2018, I put some example services um, on this slide, which we have already offered. We have had um, trainings for Horizon 2020 proposal writing. One was um, in Campinas, one in Porto Alegre, and the focus from Marie Curie actions. Uh, we have also have uh, in Rio de Janeiro in August on ELC grants also on how to um, acquire funds. We also have an information report about uh, the Brazilian and in, in its innovative industries. We have it um, last month at boot camp in Curitiba. Um, we have also several webinars. They're all available on our website to so broadcast them. And also specifically for Brazilians, we have the, the practical guideline how to acquire or how to apply for Horizon 2020. Next slide, please. Um, this is just about our upcoming services. Um, we will have at the end of this month also an, in Europe a boot camp. This will take place in Malaga, Spain. And this will subsequently follow by the innovation tour to Brazil in the, the beginning of November. Um, as I said before, enriches the European network. So what is the heart of the network? It's, it's community. So we have elaborated a community model, which foresees four different um, categories. We have up to one side the service providers, which are able to um, provide services under the umbrella of Enrich in Brazil. We have then also the soft lending hubs, which are certified and trustful partners in Brazil or in Europe. We have the Enrich supporters, or we also call it the Enrich ambassadors, which are um, benefiting from each other. So it's more forcing for governmental actors and non-for-profit associations um, to really create win-win situations. And we have also the individuals, um, which are more like the beneficiaries of our services. In the center of everything, we have our headquarter, which is at the moment um, located in Brasilia. And we have also planned offices in Sao Paulo and in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, just to give you an idea on the broader uh, picture, besides the enriched in Brazil, as I mentioned also before, we have the enriched in China and also the enriched in the United States. As you see already on this um, slide, we already, uh, just by the three consortia of the three projects, already are quite huge network. Um, yeah, so that's actually from my side, just mentioned that um, if you want to stay tuned about our upcoming services, so also our possibilities to involve in the network, you can subscribe to our newsletter, follow us on our social channels like Twitter and Facebook and also on uh, LinkedIn. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I would give back to Fernanda now. Hi, everyone. Now. Alberto Pavin from uh, CNI as well will make an overview on Brazil innovation ecosystem and will tell you a little bit about our institute. Okay. You're on, Pavin. Okay, I'm on. Let me just close some. Okay, guys, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Alberto Pavin. I work at the National Department from Senai in Brasilia. And I am here today, especially to present you a little bit of information about the Senai Innovation Institute, this network that we have in Brazil, especially to connect industry and university. And as this Senai Innovation Institute's network is part of the National Confederation of the Industry, uh, we are going also to show you a little bit how we are inserted actually in the ecosystem from Brazil, 
bringing a broader perspective of how Brazil works in terms of science and technology and innovation, so that you that are interested in also uh, grouping yourself, working together, or finding an interesting environment to work with science and technology and education as well in Brazil, that you can find adequate partners to insert yourself here in our market. So, to start, I brought you, or at least if the slide is going on, moving on. Okay, perfect. I tried to summarize for you guys uh, some of the main players and some instruments as well that we are used to use here in Brazil when we are talking about science, technology and innovation. I separated a little bit the information for you from the side of the government, from the science, from the funding and from the industry perspective. Uh, beginning with the government, when we're talking about government agents and um, we are usually talking about the ministries, the main two uh, ministries that engage hugely uh, and really actively on actions of science, technology and innovation in Brazil are specifically the ministries for science, technology and communications, as well as the ministry for industry, foreign trade and services. But we also have a huge amount of uh, activities being coordinated also thematically or sectorially with other um, ministries, as for example, the Ministry for Education, the Ministry for Health, the Ministry for Agribusiness, and there are also other ministries that engage a lot on science and technology, as for example, the Ministry for Defense or the Ministry for Environment. But we try to focus here on some of the ministries that are usually more engaged and involved in such activities in Brazil. Specifically talking about some agencies that coordinate mainly research mobility, people with expertise going around the world, exchanging their uh, best practices, their uh, um, research topics and results are CNPQ and CAPIS, which are direct linked specifically to the Ministry of Science, Technology and Communications and to the Ministry of Education, respectively. If we're talking about the science uh, perspective, we are going to find in Brazil federal, state and private universities. Brazil is uh, well known for having a, a, an interesting uh, landscape for research, basic research, which are usually very well coordinated within those federal, state and private universities. We have specific kinds of institutes called federal institutes or in Portuguese, institutos federais, which are supposed to also support uh, translating uh, basic research from federal, state and private universities to the industries in terms of applied research. We also have some other public and private research institutes in Brazil. We, from Senai, with this network of innovation institutes, constitute a private uh, research network, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, later on, as well as we have different kinds of uh, national associations, scientific associations in Brazil, and some specific networks called the INCTs. These are thematic knowledge networks that try to promote some specific and prioritized topics uh, in terms of uh, basic research development in Brazil. If we're talking about the funding perspective, we are used to uh, engage jointly with the National Bank for development in Brazil, the BNDES, which has a lot of different funding modalities, some of them in terms of direct financing, investments, or capital investments for promoting innovation in Brazil. Some of them also are subsidiary resources for innovation projects. Probably the most famous agency to work with uh, innovation funding methods in Brazil is FINAP, 
which is acting broadly to finance projects all around Brazil, promoting that university and companies engage together to uh, support innovation activities. And usually when we're talking about uh, regional and local perspectives, we have the FAPs, which are kinds of foundations that operate fundings either coming from DNDS or from FINAP, or they do their own partnerships locally and regionally with other uh, uh, agents in the region in order to raise funds, uh, especially to promote basic to applied uh, research and support also innovation in the local companies. One of the most famous actors that has appeared in the last years in Brazil to promote and to make more agile the system for um, finding finances, uh, fundings for innovation is Embrapi which is the uh, Brazilian innovation company to foster research and innovation within industry. It is a, a, a private company in Brazil that really promotes a faster way to uh, access some innovation funding uh, lines in order to uh, constitute uh, new innovation projects within the industry. In terms of some instruments, we could mention very uh, focused here some regulatory agencies, as for example, ANP that regulates the sector for oil and gas in Brazil, and ANEL, which is regulating the sector for uh, electric distribution in Brazil. There are some other agencies as well, but usually when we talk about uh, sectors that already operate for a, a long time, Funding specifically for research and innovation, ANP, ANP and ANEL are the main ones, the most focused ones. In terms of tax exemptions, we could mention here that there are some uh, companies that are able to uh, get some benefits from tax exemptions when they are working, for example, with hardware and software development. This is what we mean by catchy. It is actually also well known in Brazil as the law of informatics. Some agents, some companies that are working in the field of hardware and software development have uh, some specific exemptions to promote innovation in this sector. And there is a more general law, which is law of, of uh, Lei do Bem, called in Brazil Lei do Bem, which are companies that uh, regularly are innovating in Brazil may have some tax exemptions as well to use specifically those uh, fundings for um, R&D nationally. If we're talking about the industry side, Brazil has a big uh, site of large and medium and small sized companies. Our large companies in Brazil are mostly multinational companies working broadly also outside of Brazil. And our internal supply chains are rather working with middle, middle and uh, small sized enterprises as well. Uh, a lot of startups are active here in Brazil and they constitute the supply chain from those large companies here. We have lots of different uh, industry associations national industry associations that articulate the interests and development of the different sectors in Brazil, of the industry side. And there are some specific players that have a very interesting also um, appeal for working with innovation in Brazil. In this sense, in the last slide, we uh, uh, mentioned here May. May is actually the uh, corporate uh, movement for supporting innovation in Brazil. It is constituted uh, by more than 100 CEOs of large companies that innovate in Brazil and they take uh, strategic decisions influencing government, influencing uh, the system industry as well in Brazil in taking some specific decisions on benefit of the industrial development. It is important to notice and to mention that May was the main supporter uh, for the creation of the Senai Innovation Institutes in the past, as well of 
one of the main influencers for the creation of Embrapi in Brazil, as we mentioned before. There is another very relevant player as well called Ampay. Ampay is also together with us in this project that has been mentioned by Johanna, the Enrich project. Ampay is the national association supporting all the relevant players in Brazil that are doing R&D activities here, companies that are doing R&D activities here, and also its community of universities and other side players that are also supporting development of innovation in Brazil. And uh, as, least but not, uh, uh, as, as last but not least, technology parks play a very important role in the uh, field of transferring technologies, new technologies from the university side also to the industrial side in Brazil. Just to contextualize you a little bit better about how we are inserted within this ecosystem in Brazil as SENAI, SENAI is actually part of the CNI, the National Confederation of the Industry. And CNI is within an umbrella called Sistema Indústria, the industry system in Brazil. We are actually a private uh, company, a private organization, not for profit organization, which is uh, exactly promoting competitiveness of the Brazilian industry worldwide. And the attribution of CNI is to actually articulate with the government, specifically to defend the interests of the industry in Brazil. And within its umbrella, there are three main organizations organizing those different uh, actions from CNI nationally. Always there is SENAI, SESI, and EL connected to an industry federation. So in the national field, we see CNI coordinating uh, different 27 industry federations and in, uh, interests from industry in Brazil. And regionally speaking, all those federations are also linked directly and managing the actions from SENAI, SESI, and EL. To be uh, very clear about what we are doing there, SENAI is taking care mainly from industrial training, technical education, professional education, to train people and transfer them to the industry. SESI is mainly concerned about uh, caring about quality of life and also security of the workers in the industry. And EL is taking care of forming people, executives, leaders to work within the industrial field. So we are going to talk broadly in this conversation about Senai and its innovation institutes. As knowing it for being inside of CN, CNI and Sistema Industry Sistema Industria Network, we are now seeing why SENAI has been chosen by government and also by May, the corporate business uh, movement for innovation in Brazil, to uh, establish a new network of innovation institutes. SENAI is mainly promoting professional technological education, innovation, and transferring it as technologies to increase competitiveness in Brazil. We are the major private network already for professional education and technological services in Latin America and are operating in more than 28 industrial sectors in Brazil. More than 1,000 operational units are available within the SANAI network as a whole. And uh, we are implementing uh, more than 3.5 million enrollments annually. So the government jointly with CNI and with SANAI took a decision six years ago to use this capillarity from SENAI to also promote not just the educational activities broadly in Brazil, but to, to start a more systematic approach to also promote and transfer technologies within those 28 industrial sectors that we already, already work with. So there is a program inside of SENAI that has been created six years ago that has been called the SENAI program for supporting the Brazilian industrial competitiveness, which is working very synergetically with the education side, with the technical and technological side, and also with the innovation network in Brazil. 
Sergio Soares is going to talk a little bit more about that later on, so I will skip further observations on that. I just wanted to emphasize a little bit uh, why this network has been created and how it has been created and how this institute could be interesting uh, uh, players to engage jointly with you European actors to work here in the Brazilian uh, market or even in the European market. This network of Senai Innovation Institutes has been born from the industry and implemented to work with and for the industry. This is mainly one of the differences that we usually find when talking about uh, international uh, research networks. The international research networks usually come from university sites and they develop themselves trying to approach and engage with industry to try to transfer uh, information and technology from the university to the industry. We have been born from the other side and we are mainly trying to always get more closer and engaged with universities in Brazil in order to uh, foster and speed up the transfer technology of uh, tra uh, technology transfer from universities to the industry in Brazil. This is our uh, clear defined mission to raise the competitiveness of the industry and work for the industry, connecting with other innovation ecosystem actors. We are actually uh, an, uh, applying uh, scientific and technological developments uh, for the industry innovation, working transversely complementary and in in a way as we are always oriented to industry research. We have a, a network of um, complementary uh, competences spread all over Brazil, and we are working a very flexible organization with an attractive environment for researchers and entrepreneurs. As we talked before, we are mainly concerned of trying to connect industry with other players like universities and other science and technology institutes in Brazil, also their startups and technology parks, bringing government and their funding agencies also to uh, raise fundings for innovation for the Brazilian industries and trying to connect with the best practices that are already uh, uh, available internationally, bringing international institutions also to work on behalf of the uh, Brazilian industry for the Brazilian development here. That's why uh, actually those institutes, those uh, semi-national innovation institutes have been uh, one of the main players engaging of, on the uh, Enrich network. This is an overview of our institutes spread all over Brazil. Today, more specifically, we are going to talk about some institutes that are within a specific group of institutes working with digital and electronic technologies. That's what we're going to hear from Sergio Soares later on. So I will skip a little bit further information on that. We will have some other webinars to cover all the competence of those different institutes uh, in the future. But it's important to uh, highlight here the way that we are usually engaging with uh, um, companies and with other partners, nationally and internationally speaking. We are always working on behalf of conducting um, research and development project, an applied research and development project, where a company must be well defined, interesting interested on uh, solving an RDNI challenge and bringing some part of funding resources to conduct that project. We as institutes for uh, binding university knowledge with industry challenges, we are going to bring also internal resources, find other resources that we have already considered and, and discussed a little bit in the first talks about the funding agencies in Brazil, and we are going to engage with national and international partners to uh, bring up all the knowledge and all the competences needed to promote solutions, complete solutions, to be delivered to those companies here in Brazil. So, 
when talking about those different institutes that constitute, those 26 institutes that constitute our uh, current network of innovation institutes, today we are mostly interested on talking a little bit about the value proposition and the offers that a specific set of institutes from the electronic and digital technologies have to offer, which we usually call as the digital group. I will let my word pass on to my colleagues that are going to talk a little bit further on topics from their cases, project cases, and already offered uh, solutions to the industry. And I will remain here as uh, an opportunity to uh, also respond to your questions later on. Thanks very much for your time. See you later on on further webinars as well. Well, now Sandy Soares will talk a little bit about his institute and research on technology, digital technology. Uh, one second, please. Thank you. 
information is a part of the network. So today I'll have a chance to show a little bit for you uh, some cases we have that we have uh, partnerships with all, 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 all those uh, part of those institutes actually. So it will show you also a plans on how we work and how those institutes work together to deliver uh, applied research projects for our Brazil. Our institute is actually in an ecosystem, it's a well-known ecosystem in Brazil called Both Digital or Digital Park. Um, it's a technological park, it's one of the most known, well-known technological parks. Um, we have a that is almost 13 million US dollars investment founded by the uh, development of the Brazilian Bank. And we are creating this uh, uh, which has more than 20,000 square meters. Uh, you have a lot of uh, labs as well as a technological college with uh, a new courses. And specifically, the institute in the area of innovation is that applied research work we are doing there. Uh, so we have like software engineers, but as well as uh, masters and PhD uh, researchers that work to deliver and create those models. Some of their research fields, again, about uh, right now uh, doing work with or uh, preparing ourselves for work with our research fields would be artificial intelligence, big data and analytics, of course, to the to big trends and hypes all over the world. We are looking at it as well as blockchain. So we are preparing. Actually we don't have any blockchain projects right now, but we have people who can be prepared to work with it. Um, cloud computing and actually any business as a service is X as a service as we write now. Um, the idea is to use cloud computing and use the cloud to deliver different business, uh, actually business uh, models. Uh, we also work with television, Internet of Things, music computing, which is a new thing we're doing right now. I'll speak a little bit for you about, about this. And software platform in general, this is uh, uh, something very strong. We believe in really different software platforms can be really scalable and applied to several in, in uh, virtually all of any industry in Brazil or in the world. And we also have worked with Frito in the community reality. Part of those research fields are really together with other uh, Senai innovation institutes that are that have the main focus on those research areas, but because we work together with them, we also have some research ongoing on these fields and I uh, let you know a little bit uh, soon. Right now I think I can say a little bit about uh, the operations of the institute. Um, we are really working hard on preparation transition from industry 4.0. So we formed uh, industrial work revolution over here at Senai and uh, not only us but uh, a number of institutes are working on delivering, creating, delivering solutions for transition, pre preparing the different industry, which most of it are small industries. We are not ready for we are working on solutions and on um, uh, platforms, scalable platforms, so we can actually help them to get ready and to be more competitive teams, most of them, our main, our major mission, as I can say. So we also work with innovative solutions for industrial technology transformation in general. So this would be uh, not only for small, but medium and large companies. As well as scalable software platforms to address technology, technology bottlenecks, effective form. Uh, in helping and supporting decision making. Decision -making. So, um, we, have, we also work with some solutions for the further development of new business opportunities. So, as I was saying, we have a software platform that can actually uh, create new business uh, uh, models. So, we can you can kind of sell the same product you are selling, you industry you are selling, but with a different, a different or new business model, the idea of uh, anything as a service for instance, uh, uh, represents that. And so the platforms are crucial for enabling such business model. We can say a little bit about software platforms for uh, design development for scalable ICT solutions in general. And we also are uh, really, uh, we think it's very really important to be uh, a capable for technology transfer. Uh, to and their suppliers, which can be actually two different industries, but as well as developing 
each other, and to work while you do the uh, uh, computational simulation uh, project. Uh, this is another project that we did for CERTAL. It's a company, it's a company, very a company responsible mm -hmm. over Brazil for bike sharing program, for instance. So it's a very really innovative company. And this is a green way the idea is to have uh, an app that synchronizes traffic lights, uh, time. The idea is to tell the driver uh, if he needs to speed up a little bit or speed down a little bit so he can get the next traffic light green. Uh, and this is to have also some safety issues in, uh, in uh, some pilot cases. Uh, and I can go to the cab uh, stop to stay stopping the red, the red lights. Uh, so the idea is that the app would help the citizens and drivers to, to avoid such uh, hazards. Uh, actually, the idea of the app is to get information from the traffic and to automatically and on the fly adjust traffic traffic lights and conversations. Uh, one idea too is to have those apps on, on emergency vehicles. So an ambulance can just say, I can have an emergency right now, and this is my path, so please uh, reprogram all the traffic lights. My bad, so we can reach the hospital or the, 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 the accident area faster. So, actually, this work will, will be made together with the uh, university, the federal university of Tennessee. So, this is also an example of a uh, corporation. Another project uh, we made with Bruce, uh, actually, in Southern Italy. It was to perform, uh, create a platform for social optimization, reduce production, collecting and monitoring production. Uh, uh, to interpret the, the production line to see how to optimize, where are the bottlenecks, and how we can optimize the production. Um, also, it would help the company to be in predictive maintenance, as well as to use more rational like, uh, resource resources like raw material, water, electricity, and energy. This was a project made together with the NS system. Another case is to train the minds in Portuguese would be like train more in English uh, for our startup company together with a design center of Senai in the United States. The other state. It is to provide a education app that will help to train paralytic uh, athletes. So it's a really interesting case. It's social also part of the project. What, what as well. Um, another project is a uh, SWAT project, Smart Water Network. It's intelligent smart meter. Uh, uh, actually, uh, it is to not only monitor consumption, water consumption, but also to identify the experience, the most like obviously innovative part of the project to identify the so the network, not only on, on residential air, uh, network, but also the distribution network for our water companies. Actually, this project is right now being uh, extended or being planned to be extended, or planning to extend the project for other utilities like electricity and gas, and of course, we do a lot of IoT and artificial intelligence and data. With us, the microelectronics innovation is really good. One project in the digital reality field uh, is actually process for assisting industrial training. Uh, for based on reg regulatory norms in Brazil as well as in other countries, I suppose. If you are, if you are like maintaining electric infrastructure, you need to have those uh, certification. So it's a, it's a system that will work to, to, to help you to uh, train and uh, to take those certifications. Set, set, set this project is made together with the digital production system. Another great, really interesting uh, project is Smart Plastics Project, which is uh, made with a, a startup. Um, so, the idea of this project is to um, monitor where uh, packages are uh, between uh, the industry and their suppliers. Uh, so, the industry can the logistics of the industry can be aware if their uh, raw materials or the parts of their projects are coming in a, in a 
plan and way. Actually, we create these platforms for you to personally understand the information because it's an example of a software platform that, that can be actually scalable and be much more generalized than the original goal of the group. So that it was traced um, by this, but you can actually do this for any kind of objects. Uh, which is together with that basic material innovation scheme. Uh, it's so tall. Another institute that, that is outside of our uh, technological group showing again that the network is working together. Another project that works more with data and analytics is uh, this Vero uh, XML project that is to uh, analyze uh, voices to avoid like uh, fiscal trends, like taxes issues uh, on a company that would be a uh, really hazard for the company. Uh, we also work together with this. Uh, and here now is a project between the control and monitor of uh, the blessing consumption, energy consumption, mostly in, in residential but also in digital environments uh, as well. So the idea is to identify and, and uh, understand and identify consumption partner uh, uh, patterns in a way that can uh, help you change your consumption pattern, better consume energy or consume energy where the price is lower, so uh, uh, increasing the uh, electric bill. Uh, this is also need to get the renewable energy emission and feel good about this. This is also a really interesting project in terms of what we, we had to get and we had after the project in Colombia. So this was more than a pilot project actually. The microwave for the uh, it was to monitor the production, the production line of bakery. So, uh, Britain has lots of bakeries, and bakeries are uh, types of industries as well. So, uh, the idea was to actually monitor how the, the production line works, uh, to make sure the production line is working as it was supposed to do, as well as controlling um, uh, resources like. Uh, Why should I use IoT? Uh, 
um, those are some benefits we use to present to companies or why companies should work with this uh, centralization network. Uh, so you get this to increase company focus on core competencies and, and use open innovation uh, for other other projects they might have. So this is, really, this is a good way to start. Um, the company will uh, best us and get and get used to, to have the open innovation uh, projects, right? Uh, as well as increase research and development capacity in the company. So that is our our team can and should actually work together to work with uh, R and uh, teams or companies R and D teams. Um, of course, our teams can can work together inside the company on site, uh, as well as uh, 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 on our distribution. So the capitalization of CNI, which has almost one thousand units all over Brazil, is also a big help for this because it actually means many things that there is a the network we have provides for the companies uh, multidisciplinarity uh, in terms of uh, even I am an ICT institute, you can bring to me or to any of my colleagues on the network a program of, from, from any research field uh, in terms of complexity or to take several research fields and means it would of the network who uh, take the project and internally we can uh, create a multidisciplinary uh, team from people with people from uh, several of those institutes. There are two types of projects that we would uh, do the first uh, the first contact with the companies that we test are uh, just to see how the network works. Uh, and actually, the idea of open innovation to be aware that uh, most strategic projects that deal with the core businesses of the companies are leading the companies are more uh, hard to deal or uh, outside corporate uh, innovations to work with. Um, also, the idea to increase the research and development capacity of the industry. So, uh, we would like the industry to look us as our R&D department of the uh, We can actually work together with their teams or lead their team if they don't have our research and development uh, department of the So the goals work and work together with their team is exactly a good way to uh, transfer technology and right away to the project. So uh, this is part of our mission as well. Uh, we have a flexible IP. You have IP policies, but they have no best just to say we don't have a straight job. So, for the main goal of each project, we can have different uh, IP negotiations. So, we also uh, work hard on uh, helping industry to identify new suppliers as well as to develop new suppliers. As I mentioned, that we work uh, with several startups. And, of course, our main uh, mission here at CNI and at the Innovation Institute are to increase the industry. Those are the goals for any So to conclude, um, SEMA is the has been uh, the major partner for training in best methods for industry uh, for more than seventy years, seventy six years I think right now. Uh, we have the largest network of accredited network ever. Uh, and we now have the largest network of private we are working very hard and are really focused on being a major industry partner for the fourth industrial revolution. As I was mentioning, we are creating both programs and both projects that will be uh, uh, executed all over Brazil with the idea of being really scalable and really apply to small companies which are kind of 90% of the what I have to talk 
Now, if anyone has any doubts or questions, please you can send to us and we can respond. We'll leave it open for three more minutes. And we will send the link of the video so you can watch with more um, the, the better audio. So we don't have any questions for now. Um, Sergio, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Fabien. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you, Carolina. And we'll see you next uh, webinar. And you can uh, enter our web page. I will share our contacts. You can enter our web page and see what Erich is doing and what will be our next seminar. Thank you very much.